Okay, so here's said ring. And this spins, this spins, this doesn't spin and makes a shit ton of noise. So we're just gonna move this over to here. We're just gonna zit, zit, zit. So the machine's a neutralist, neutralist, so I can roll it. So, cause I don't have to get out of here. Cause uh, there's a puddle right there. And uh, we got a great grounding area. Hopefully, I wonder if the, I don't know, I thought I brought, I gotta find a place to ground this. I don't know if that's gonna work. Well, let's test it. This is fork, is it? No, there's no scratch. Now, if it was gonna work, it would go like that. But, yeah, so I gotta find me a way to ground this. I don't wanna deface this. So, um, anyhow, we'll figure that out. But I just gotta hold it in there just, just right. I put a zip tie in there, it didn't work. So you see how it just needs to kiss this, just, and not rattle all the fucking time. So it starts spinning about 70 miles an hour, and then you stop and it keeps going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we know what to do. We just don't know how to do it. We're doing a water survey and I followed the water. The water actually starts up there. It comes around this because the way the the concrete sloped comes around the corner. Their septic comes out. What they have here is they've got a French drain here and then it goes over to here. And then they tied this into here. So at least this is flowing nicely. And meanwhile, Nothing's picking this up, and it just keeps going. Collect some more down here. So, um, I mean, there's less water. Um, what I told them years ago is they needed to put a drain up here, and here, and maybe over here, and pick up all this water and move it underground before it even gets there. But yeah, you get that whole hill there coming off there and going in there. There's a storage room way down there, but that's uphill. And in fact, there was stuff blocking from water coming into that. So right on here, I put in a drain line. I don't know if they tied into that. Maybe they did. It's kind of hard to see. Everything's so dark, dark forest. So, well, this is a very heavy rain, so we need a good rain to uh, test things out. At least it's picking some of the water up. <laughs> so, um, the sails extend out into the country. This one's pissed. Watch out for the good dog. Oh, there's a big doggy. It's pretty vocal. A lot of duckies. I think those are wood ducks? I don't know. Oh, I forgot to videotape this. Um, so I took the wheel off. I took the brake caliper off the part that squeezes. And uh, the pads were stuck, meaning the pads are supposed to move around side to side. 
So typically that happens because of two reasons. One is the caliper itself rusts and they're tight tolerances. So the metal piece here, you can see there's little stainless steel things there. So I cleaned all this out and I ground the tabs on the brake pads down. I got them so they'd, they'd sit in there and move. And I put that back together. And I was thinking to myself, hey self, that's what I think. Maybe I should do the other side. Well, I tore this off and uh, notice the brownish color. Notice it's kind of like a haze here and it's literally stuff coming up. So basically that's leaking, the hydraulic fluid, which is nasty stuff. So it ain't loose, it ain't sticking, but I got a whole nother problem here. It's a nice thing. there's continentals. Um, so I'm gonna have to order a rebuild kit. And this one I think I am gonna rebuild because I think the calipers are like four hundred dollars for a rebuild one. So yeah, that's uh that's for a future date. The good thing is the seal's about eight to ten dollars. Uh, the only issue is if I pull it out in the cup, the piston part, or the bore where it goes in is all rusted. So when they rebuild those, a lot of times this is a cycle you get into, they'll make them bigger and put in a bigger piston and then if you have them and then 10 years later you go to rebuild them nothing fits because they're customized so once once you replace the calipers pretty much in my opinion you're done you just go back and get new ones each time you don't really rebuild them that's why on the truck i debated but if you can't get the pistons themselves then you're in a whole nother problem and i couldn't find the pistons so I'm not on that cycle, even though they're the original four ones, I believe. So anyhow, um, yeah, we're going to come back to that. But uh, we're going to go ahead and check the brake fluid since it's coming out here. You know, it's just flowing. It's automatically changing itself. So that's kind of good. You know, it's kind of like a car drips a lot of oil. You don't have to change the oil because every time you pour some in, sun comes out. So all good. Okay, well, we're underneath Talia's car. And uh, when I took it for test drive, everything's working, but this is rattling. And I went to tighten this, this ripped off. So I'm gonna loosen this, but this doesn't wanna come out. So we're gonna use a tool I bought a couple years ago called a hot rod. Basically that's gonna get really freaking hot when I plug this in and press the trigger. Uh, again, I haven't used this, but basically it's an inductive heater. It's gonna go right around there and hopefully that's gonna come right off. So we're gonna try that. Um, obviously being a very small rusted nut, it's a high probability of not having success. So if I try to rip it off or do normal stuff, um, I have done things where I just weld a, a big washer on there and a nut, but I don't want to do that. So when you give that a go, that's for. It's not another one over there. Let's go to something important. Wait, no, there's something over there. I wonder if that's a, I don't know. Let's see if we can do this. Yeah. Tell the uh, stuff I sprayed on there is getting really hot. So. Smells good. That's actually the undercoating, the uh, lanolin. <laughs> we'll hit it with some pantherpy in a little bit. It'd be a uh, Oh yeah, she got red. See that red tint? Oh, oh we're hot. We'll give that a go. Ah, that actually worked incredibly well. I sprayed some panther pee, but I'm, I'm just, it's coming right off. I barely even took it. Look, I got this little tiny wrench. It ain't like a big monster wrench. Like I brought over here like this wrench, which is oh, about a foot long, so yeah. So far, I'm winning. So I'm just saying we put a big wash around this and bend this up and hopefully she'll stay. Oh, look, there's a little smoke coming out of there. That's interesting. Oh, because that's a channel. I get it. Well, as they say, you win one, you lose one. So um, I heated this one up and I thought I could just tighten it because it felt loose and I didn't realize it was already to threads. So when I tightened it, it just went snap and broke right off. So we're going to do a technique called zip tie it, but we're going to use copper wire instead. So I'll show you the end result. But uh, yeah, it's definitely going to make some noise. Uh, typical one step forward, six back. Okay, well, 
she's tight. So basically I used some copper wire because I didn't want to zip ties and I went around the parking brake here, but I, I, I kept it a distance away. So this is gonna transfer a little, very little heat over there. But uh, that's now, she's, she's sturdy. So that should be out of last. This one's good. This one might have been the offending matter to begin with. But uh, we're going to declare success for now. I wonder if there's a way to bend that. It needs a thing right there. I guess I could, I don't know what. It's, yeah, we're going to leave that alone. So, anywho, uh, yeah. That's what happens when uh, your cheap ass Costco things you put on the shelf so they're hanging off halfway, then they collapse internally and fall down to the ground because the lid wasn't on tight. So I'm gonna deal with that later. Um, so yeah, uh, so far the, yeah, I've only used this once, but it's pretty handy. So it comes with a bunch of attachments. Is that cold? Yes. So this is basically copper wire. You can actually make your own. This just has insulation around it to I don't know, burn you, maybe? So this just pops in there. This goes in there. So it comes with this one. Whoops. And again, it um, even comes with some extra wire to uh, make your own. I spent way too much money on this, so you can make your custom. I think that goes in there. I don't know. But um, yeah, I was happy for the first time. I think, though, when you plug it in, it starts working. I think that button here just turns the light on because there's an LED right at the end there. So I'm gonna put this bad boy away for the night. A garage sale today and Sophia bought a whole bunch of stuff. I only bought a few things, a couple of CDs, and then I bought a, this guy. This is a German Knipix. I know so because it says so, Germany. Uh, it's a very unique tool. Basically, it's if you've ever dealt with a CV boot. Uh, an axle boot, there's a, a stainless steel ring that goes around. And then the ring comes out of the box like this. There's a little attachment. And then there's hooks that attach to the other side. So it's like a hose clamp. And then you bend in the little tabs, which shortens the distance, and it locks it in. Because there's little tabs on this side. Um, I'm sure that made no sense. But anyhow, um, these allow you to get on there and crimp the, the top. And hence, well because it's got, you know, that little short piece there. And then this side allows you to cut it if you need to. So it's a very unique tool. Um, so they had a box, they had $25 with a whole bunch of tools in there. Everything I'd already had weren't very high quality except for this piece. And the box is really nice, but do I need another toolbox? There's four downstairs in the basement, by the way. There's one upstairs, the, uh, the upstairs, so no. So I talked him into buying this, and that was 75 cents. I also got this. This is a very unique tool. She's a snap-on. Yeah, A159. Um, this has one sole purpose. On a car like this with crank windows, you slide this down and pop the handle off. That's the only thing it does. Why is there? Oh, that's, that's that stuff that absorbs water, uh, silicone packets. So I have one of these now. Didn't have one earlier today, and I certainly didn't need a snap-on version, but we'll put that right back there. Uh, then I got some weird miscellaneous fittings. Now, this is wicked cool. Didn't need it. There was a box of just, like, airline fittings, and it was a dollar. This, also made in Germany, and it's brass, is an air gauge, or a, a PSI gauge, and it's water-filled. Why? I don't know, but it's super cool. Um... I'm not sure how I hook this up, but it uh, looks like it's a regular half-inch pipe. But at some point, I need to hook up that reel over there, air hose reel. I got everything ready to go, except I got a... Uh, I used copper line. There's a specific reason for that. Um, but yeah, there's my copper line going all the way there. It comes down there, and it goes up there, and that goes up to over there, which supplies that one, which is manual reel, this one. It's also manual, but it's nicer. Uh, been here for four years, never hooked up. I need to hook this part up. And I gotta shut off. But basically, I gotta solder. I gotta cut the line, put in a T, and solder it in. Um, I think I may incorporate that 
file somewhere. This is super cool. Um, why did I use copper? Well, because at the time it wasn't that expensive. I put this in in 2008. Um, copper cools the line down, so if you're compressing the air, it does get warmer. Copper kind of cools it down, and it lasts forever, um, and it's sturdy enough. Um, but uh, you have to solder it. Well, you don't have to solder it. I choose to solder it because I'm cheap, and uh, I just didn't want to, you know, go up there and do that quite yet. So, okay, so... That's done. And this one's fixed for now, but I got to address that brake, leaking brake. I do have an update on this bad boy. Either the sensor I bought is failing or another brake sensor is failing. So basically, it thinks the wheel is skidding, so it applies the brake to it. So all of a sudden, you're driving, and all of a sudden, da 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 I turn off tracking control. It makes no difference. And then after about 20 seconds of doing that, going and stopping it then stops and then it throws all sorts of lights on the dashboard so this is what it did a year ago i i need to hook up the computer and go through the menus and see if it tells me which brake sensor is doing because there's only four that would narrow things down so either it's a bad brake sensor again or a new one that's failing or it's a wiring problem i tend to think it's a wiring problem because it's intermittent and it seems to happen when it's dry out, uh, uh, ironically. So it didn't happen in the winter or something. I don't know. So uh, we're going to Ikea today to pick up some uh, lawn furniture. They'll go over there. Um, I don't, to me, it's a scam. The lawn furniture world because the stuff, I can't put it inside. It's going to stay outside. So it's going to get UV attacked. So the cushions I told we could store up. I can make a, a bracket or something up there. But um. Uh, you know, it's going to degrade. So it's a 10-year thing. So spending $3,000 this is going to last 10 years, maybe 15. doesn't make any freaking sense. And the, the metal ones are uncomfortable. So you want stuff with cushions. And they're all made out of, like, plastic fiber crap. So uh, we're going to go to Ikea and buy Ikea stuff. They'll last about the same amount of time, but cost one-half to one-third the price. But, anyhow, we got to go to get it because um, delivery is expensive. Um, so I did go get some diesel so put 120 dollars worth in there we i go to the truck stop it's a pain in the ass because there's a science there they got pumps and you got to pick which pump you're using because you can fill up like three tanks at once there's hoses everywhere and i think i finally cracked it i need to use number four not number three number three is close as the truck but number four is the one that has to be primary because it has the gauge where number three doesn't do anything even though it says hey which pumps do you want to use you type in number three, it says number three, and then nothing happens. Anyhow, so um, stopped to some sales on the way back. And um, it's funny because I was at this lady's house. I was going through her trash because uh, she was selling out some really cool stuff. And then uh, she's like, just giving me stuff for free. And I'm like, hey, do you want any money? No, 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 no. And then today I come to her sale. Completely different story. She's like haggling with me. But um, I got this really old wrought iron bench. Uh, the top looks good. The, the bottom... Eh, she needs at least to be scraped and maybe painted, but um, it's definitely old, and it's uh, it's the Ohio Rake Company in Dayton, Ohio. So that's kind of a cool piece of history. I can bolt it down. Um, it is dense. The, the top's in good shape. Just that little piece needs a little bit of help. Um, sandpaper. Now, this is 320. This is awesome for hand finishing. Um, like you, you know, a finish coat kind of thing and there's a whole box here and these are nice sandpapers these are nortons no they're carbonium really good nonetheless uh, i think this is all norton yeah and uh, there's just an assortment in here of little pieces but uh you know this stuff's expensive when you want to go buy it and it's only a few dollars when you want to get this 180 uh good stuff nonetheless then i got a uh, she who was previously named wants to store stuff in their new hobby room. So, craft room? It's taking a bedroom and making it a craft room. Uh, these are, we're told, are expensive because they're $1.50 because they're atlases, not just basic jars. So that says that's some meatless, so I think that right to Some of these are really, that one's really cool. Strong shoulders. Well, it's got strong shoulders. I think that's the classic style. Um, then I got some boards for a project that she wants me to do. Um, these are, I don't know what kind of wood it is, but this will probably work pretty well. It's thick, thick stuff. Then I got an edger. You know, never had an edger. You just, you want an edge? There you go, edger. 
So we'll uh, go ahead and blend seed oil that. But uh, I got all that for 40 and then this I paid $7, probably too much, but I don't know. You go to the store, these things are expensive. So we're at the Ikea's. These are luggage tags, so apparently we got a whole th thing going on with the horses. And uh, yeah, they're just not meatballs anymore. I don't know what this stuff is. Cakes and biscuits. I don't like biscuits. It's expensive though. Oh. They got the back swimmers there. I think I fell in love. Apparently they got electromatic bikes here. This is interesting. Is that flashlight? Seems a little bit money for five speed. Look at the size of these guys. I don't know the world's biggest hands, but there's some big tires. Oh, so they got any campies. This one's five thousand dollars, but it's wireless. These electric shifters. They take little batteries. Never thought you'd have Bluetooth shifting. And so it begins. I don't even know what that is. I got a, I got a lot of, I got a building to do. I got IKEA building to do. I built the first one. I just have to assemble all that and all those. Those I'm gonna wait. Those are new dining room chairs. I think they're gonna be nice. And then, oh yeah, I got that too. So yeah, we're gonna be just drinking and screwing. Well, it's 9.30 Saturday night, and it looks like I just ate all the pizzas of the world, but uh, those are all the Ikea boxes that are empty, so those are ready to be processed in the recycling, so let's go see what we did. <sighs> it's 9.30, I gotta go to bed. Those I gotta move upstairs. So I have two boxes left uh in a few parts so i built all the bases this is one two three four five six and then um there's got one chair back that goes over here so there's one corner piece i'll do that tomorrow then there's a bunch of bracket trees that i think you put between the legs so that you tie all these together but i want to confirm she wants it like this so they'll I'm not enthusiastic. The only way to get through here is going to be through here. Things, things are going to move around. So, uh, yeah, that wasn't too bad. Uh, glad it wasn't, you know, like October, not October, uh, July or something. But uh, this came in handy. And um, just to be uh, clear, enhance. Those look like Phillips. Those are not. You look carefully, you see those little lines. That's a PZ drive. So there's a special screwdriver bit called a PZ. P, P, enhance. Well, it's a PZ2. Yeah, this is never gonna focus. Never gonna focus. Anyhow, it's called PZ2. Anyhow, um, it's a special bit. It looks like a Phillips, but it isn't a Phillips. It's Phillips-like. It, it's just, it's not gonna... There's, there's just no way. Maybe I think if I take, oh, there we go. Yeah, it's longer than a Phillips. Like a Phillips, normally have a, a shorter tip. Anyhow, um, it fits the screws perfectly. I mean, I could probably stick this screw in the side here and it will hold the screwdriver up. That'd be an awesome test if it actually worked, but uh, you get the idea, it, it fits the bit. So, so tomorrow we'll finish this up. I think she's assembled all the cushions in the cushion department yeah so we'll see then um there's a table probably goes right about here and then uh that's another project and then the chairs are for the dining room so i call it a night watch some secession see what kind of mayhem they've cooked up for this week